Welcome back to Beyond the Helmet. And of course, that is hashtag BTH pod. If you're following on social media, I'm your host, Steve McGrath. And today I get to chop it up with one of my favorite people on TikTok. It is former <laughs> NFL athlete, but most importantly, because we're not just athletes, you know, we have more than one title or more than one thing. TJ Barnes here is also a software developer and he's a podcast host. So we're going to, we've got a lot to catch up on TJ. How's it going today, man? Going pretty well, man. I can't, I can't complain. Just, just another day in paradise. Glad to hear it. Um, I'd say it's paradise. It's like 30 degrees outside here. I don't know where you live. You know, I'm trying to just make it to the spring at least. Yeah. Every day that I walk outside, I'm in for, uh, uh, something interesting. Sometimes it's, like 30 degrees some like today it was like 70 so it's always just something new I'm a, a different type of wild core so I'm never really uh expecting it to be the same thing every day so now you know part of what you do with social media is talk about your experiences so maybe people mm -hmm. didn't recognize your name as the from when you play but now you're connecting with so many people in a different way talking about the playing days do you mind just talking about what life is like now? Because of course you're also a dad. You, you got the podcast that we uh, mentioned. We'll get more into, but also being in software. What's a normal day in the life like? Man, like it's it's definitely different. I have more free time than well, I want to say more free time. I have to utilize my time a lot more than I did when I was playing because I'd go to work and. I'd be so drilled in and so focused. Like, I got weights, I got film, I got to make sure I eat, all these different types of things that are fa uh, factoring into my day. And it's, uh, it was tough to transition out of that. And I say that because because I didn't know really what to, to really too much do with myself because the only thing I've ever done was play football. And so you had mentioned um, um, me getting into software development and things like that. And it wasn't just like, oh, I'm, I'm going to get into tech. It was more so like I was, once I was done with football, once I clicked in my head that I was just completely done, I was like, what, what can, do I do with myself? And I'm seeing all my friends and former teammates and who have transitioned out of the game, just get back, get into like broadcasting or, you know, they're having like, ha having an easy transition out of sports. And I wasn't having that. And I was taking on different type of jobs and I was working for this company called Carvana. And it was cool. I'm a really good people person. Um, but it just wasn't the position that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Like the work life wasn't the best. I was just always gone. I was never with my family. Um, and it did, and I reached my ceiling at the position that I was at. I was a customer advocate one and they weren't looking to uh, promote me to the position that I want to do, which is weird coming from like, uh, a performance based background in football. It's like, if you do a good, really good job, then you deserve to get like, your money and that wasn't the case here and that's one of the difficult things that I have in the professional world now is like I see the job description oh you need seven years experience of doing this whatever but if I understand how to do this in less amount of time wouldn't that make me look a lot better um, for this position but that's not a here or there and then I was dealing with a customer and I just got finished and I was in my work truck I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Carvana trucks uh the haulers or whatever but i was just sitting in my hauler and i was like man i'm just pr i'm praying like man let me know if this is for me because i'm stressed out i'm not making the money that i would like to i'm not saying that i have to make like the football money that i was making just something decent that i can be proud of and i hopped on tiktok and i was scrolling through and i had never been on like, the tech side of tiktok and i came across like software development data analysis cybersecurity, and other um, then uh, other careers and I took that as my sign and I ran with it and I, I put in my two weeks and I just started studying on like software development doing like different boot camps and just reading like hella books on just how to master this craft and then it was cool it was cool it was cool for the moment and then one of my friends put me onto cybersecurity and he's like TJ you love this like it, it's basically being like in the NFL, but in the site, in the like the web world, and I'm like, uh, I'm I'm liking what I'm doing right now, and so I don't know what it was. I think I was just stuck on like a project because in software development you deal with all the type of bugs, and 
sometimes you get discouraged dealing with uh, different languages. I know this one I was dealing with JavaScript. And I was like, let me just give this cybersecurity uh, a try or whatever. And man, it was the best decision I ever made. I just, I fell in love with it. It felt like I was playing football, but in the cyber world. And like doing, being like a, uh, reading different, like I'm not a big reader at all. Like um, I'll read like comic books or whatever I find interesting or whatever, like Harry Potter or whatever. But I never found myself going to Barnes and Noble buying like books on like software development or find myself like often reading cases or uh, different type of cyber issues. Like one case that I was really uh, interested in was, uh, I didn't know that Tiger, not Tiger, <laughs> I'm sorry, but Target had like a massive like cybersecurity issue a couple years ago. And my wife, she loves to go to Target and things like that. And I, I had no idea about that, but stuff like that I just find interesting now. And I'm just constantly reading this, trying to find information and stuff. But um, after I left my p position at Carvana last May, I was able to get a position at a, this company called Markel, and I've been uh, excelling ever since. And it's the, been the best decision I've made, jumping off, jumping off a leap of, leap of faith, leaving a secure position I had with Carvana to get into something that wasn't um, secure until now. So, so uh, you know, there's so much of that that I can see parallels to being a pro athlete, you know, the, the kind of having to bet on yourself part, I, I, right. that, that, that's obvious. But, you know, for me, and I just like, this is just like referencing like me playing football in high school, like the smallest level, but like it was tough to not have like a physical exertion that like sort of showed, am I good or do I need to improve? How much, if any, was there like a transition for you to like, not doing something physical, but basically you prove how good you are with yeah. just the mental, just the mental. That to me was the hardest thing to, to like actually wrap my, my mind around. Man, it was like, I was like, when I was done or when I wasn't getting any calls, I was just searching for something physical to do. Like only pe three people know that I was trying to do like MMA or be a boxer or just do different types of stuff to be physical. Cause I, I had to use my brain in football, but I didn't realize how much like of a, uh, a cere cerebral assassin I was until like I was outside and like, like I was describing, like I'm reading books all the time and different cases and stuff. But I, I just had this thirst to do something physical because that, that was the only way that I knew how to make money. And being that I'm, I was able to find something outside that was like, man, it's, it's, I'm extremely grateful and just blessed to just be able to say like, I'm actually using my brain versus using my body. And it's something that I can actually be proud of versus, you know, I'm not saying that I wasn't proud of my career in the NFL and playing football and things of that nature. It's something just like, all right, cool. I was able to do that and I can do this and it not have to be like any physical bearing on my body and stuff. So. Yeah, the, the one plus, not the one, but a plus side definitely is like not getting beat up. The wear and tear certainly isn't there. <laughs> and, and man, I was just like, when I was like talking about doing UFC, like the back of my mind, I'm like, what the hell? Like you see Conor McGregor and Rampage Johnson and like all these other guys just like, you would really want to compete with them? And they've been doing this for like umpteen amount of years and stuff. And you're just now getting into it. And like, you, you really want to do this? You really want to mess up your face? And and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. It's something physical, you know. I'm, I'm a physical specimen myself. And um, oh, also, I I tried out for the WWE, and I wanted to, like I, I was a big wrestler fan back when it was the WWF and WCW and uh, different ventures like that. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make money. Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, he was the host of my official visit at Georgia Tech. He was one of the hosts that. Uh, I had, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. And man, that <laughs> that three day tryout that I had was was more made me appreciate the wrestlers and everything that they do do because I'm thinking, oh, I can run the ropes, I can you know do all the stuff that they do. And <laughs> the first day that I did it, run run the rope on run the ropes. The night when I got back, man, my back was just I've never been that sore in my life ever ever 
but it gave me a better appreciation of like the WWE superstars and the stuff that they do and have to go through. And I'm like, oh, it, it made me realize also it wasn't just a cakewalk. I can just come in here. Like the first day I did really well. Um, Mark Henry, who was there, uh, he was like, yeah, you're going to be one of the guys that's going to make it and stuff. And <laughs> that second day was some shit. I did not have like the conditioning to keep going and um, uh, perform, perform and stuff. Because I'm, I'm thinking, all right, cool. I'm a bigger guy. They like guys like the big show, Mark Henry and uh, Umaga and others. But they were, I guess, transitioning away from that into guys who are like, who can um, be a little bit more athletic and stuff. But, but yeah, it was just like a search to do some, something physical. But now I'm in the position where it's like basically all mental. So, yeah. Um, now, just going back to like dealing with the, I mean, clearly, you know, you have the thirst to do something, but like when you're playing, you, you had versatility just in your game. I mean, if people look at, you know, from high school being offensive linemen, switching over to defense, you know, getting all conference honors as a defensive lineman in college, you know, mostly a defensive lineman in the NFL, maybe the Buffalo Bills had a different idea for a minute, but you know, when, when you think of like, I I'm really big on, you know, past success and past experiences certainly frame almost everything we do. Do you look at being able to flip and play different sides of the ball um, as like having that sort of uh, ability to be versatile and adapt to basically whatever the situation needs? Yeah, and it made me a, a better player because I was able to once when I when I was in Buffalo, because um, yeah, I played offense in high school, but I didn't really understand the game like I did once I got to the pros. But when I played offense in um, Buffalo, it gave me a better understanding when I flipped back like this is how they like to attack me this is what they would do this is all the ways that they can block me and things of that nature but it just made me a like you said a lot more versatile and it made me a, a better player and when I transitioned over to like the I guess the real world or whatever it made me be uh, I was it, it was easy to do things that I wasn't particularly comfortable with um if it came to speaking out about things the talking in front of people or uh taking on different projects that I didn't have any experience with I'm like, all right cool I'll give it give it a shot and it gave like my higher ups like a, a diff different insight to me is like oh he's able to do these things not afraid to take on these roles or whatever and it just, it's just it's opening a lot more opp uh, opportunities for me and it's something that I thought everybody would do or whatever but that's not the case some people are afraid to take a woman face and just try to do something if you fail at it it's, it's all right it's all right cool you didn't have that knowledge at that time but now you have the experience and you know what's going what's what can work and what's not going to work and stuff and it's funny that i get a lot of people on tiktok or whatever they're like oh well you play you 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 played x amount of times or you only have like nine tackles or whatever but i'm like and it's like it's more of a public failure in their eyes but i'm okay with that because i was able to learn from all these situations that i've been through in the nfl and was able to have in my eyes better success in the work that i'm doing now so totally in anyone that, that's ever saying stuff like that to you like you you know it's coming from a bad place it's coming from someone that really hasn't done much because <laughs> the amount of people that would give anything to have said i made it to the nfl for a single game let alone years of different teams like saying yeah we want to sign this guy i i, I mean i i credit you for giving them any time of day at all it's funny because a lot of people they're saying, "Oh, you don't need to give them time yeah. of day." You you, you do laugh like at them. You 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 are really good at not letting it get to you. And the thing is, maybe like if I was in like uh, college or whatever, it would get to me or whatever because I would have like teammates go on like blogs and talk bad about me because I was doing well in practice on like scout team and stuff. But now me being an adult, having to deal with like the media, especially being like in New York, you get you get used to people saying negative things or whatever, but I try to do it in a, a positive, not, not too much a positive light, but I do it my best not to call nobody after names or make it personal or anything like that, or be like a bigot about something or anything like that. I try to make people laugh and whatever. And then the thing is like, you come onto my page and then you say something like, oh, you had 
I got more sacks than you or whatever. I'm like, okay. And then I, I'm petty. And that's one of the things that, <laughs> um, that that's a, a negative about me because I'll do my best to find some type of research about you. Like, oh, okay. And then I'll make it in the way where it can be taken. Like, oh, he said something that is going to, get him what's the um what's the word that people use now uh not blackball but um uh, shadow ban not shadow ban uh, uh it's the basically like we're gonna um um i can't think of the word it's not coming to me right now but we're just gonna uh blast you everywhere saying that you're a bigot or whatever whatever and now you shut down I'm like nah i do it in a way that people are you just really getting people. canceled getting canceled. That's what it is. You're like, Oh, we're going to cancel you or whatever. But, um, I do it in a way where people can laugh at it. I don't make it like personal or anything like that. I don't, I try, I don't talk about nobody's mom's wife, husband, kids, or anything like that. Uh, if I see somebody with a bad haircut in their profile, kid, I'm like, bro, look like you got your, uh, haircut with like a, um, a Super Bowl in your head. Or if it's some, if they're, if they're talking about my content, I'll go on their page and I'll, comment positive stuff and things of that nature and just try to flip the switch a little bit but I, I do give people the time of the day that don't need it but maybe they're having a deeper issue than I I have I have and maybe I can make their day a little bit brighter so in some type of way yeah at, at least hit them with the unexpected right now, you know, part part of what your journey is, um, in like just real high level for anyone that that isn't as familiar, you know, 2013, you know, undrafted, it's with the Jets. Then it kind of, you know, we, we move around a little bit, whether it's to Buffalo, quick pit stop in the Jag with the Jaguars. And now we're talking about getting into like, you know, 2016, Kansas City Chiefs, there's the mm -hmm. AAF, there's the Carolina Panthers, there's the I mean. You definitely have had your fair share of, of learning different systems, different coaches, different players, whatever it sort of took to, to grind it out. I mean, we're talking about a what is it? It's like six, seven years of yeah of being Plus in it. Years. You know, regardless of if, if it's active or, or not. I, I mean, you dedicated a huge part of your life to this. What when you think about dealing with the different lows that that journey dealt you? Hey, I made it on this team. Cut. Mm -hmm practice squad cut but like I, there, there's so many just mentally being able to deal with that keeping your head up looking for the next opportunity what did you take the most out of just being resilient through that entire ride that, that you can carry with you today man it was those times were tough because and i mean like, like the I aaa was... folded like so it's not even getting cut sometimes it's like the league just <laughs> goes away while you're playing and it's one of the reasons why I didn't want to do the like the US, USFL. Like I, in the back of my mind, I want to, but it's still like that fear that it might not pan out or it might get canceled or something might happen to where the season doesn't complete itself. Um, but yeah, it was like getting cut. Like I know the first time I got cut when I was with the Jacksonville Jaguars and coming out. Well, first, not even that, getting un going undrafted. And the crazy thing is, is that I thought I was going to be drafted by the Texans, which was like my favorite team um, um, coming out at the time. And I got a call around like the, I think it was the fifth round, fifth, fifth, fifth and sixth round or whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're about to draft you, da 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 da, da. And like, I'm, I'm crying. I got my friends and stuff all around me, my brothers and stuff. And um, look across the ticket, it says Chris Jones out of, um, not UTEP, it was not. It wasn't UTEP. It was a another 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 school. Bowling Green. That's what it was. And like, man, it was just like the you just feel so embarrassed and just like, man, I, I thought I was going to get the call and then going undrafted and and then not making your first team and then being out of football for two months and then finally get it. I got a shot, which is crazy. The I got a shot to try out for the New York Jets when they came down to play Atlanta, the Atlanta Falcons on a Monday night game. So it was that they, they it was that Thursday before they left. No, it was that Saturday um, before they left to go down to Atlanta. And my trial was like, it was okay. I was still like, I was, I was in shape, but I wasn't in football shape because I had been out for like two months. And I remember going back to the office and I was talking to my, who was going to be my D-line coach in, uh, in the next, in the next couple of days. Um, Carl Dunbar, and he was like, yeah, we don't really need any defensive line or anything like that. We're really just stacked. 
and basically tell them like, yeah, this is a waste of time. <laughs> and just basically to get your name out there into like the pool of uh, players who are starting to get workouts and stuff. And maybe you'll get a tryout after that. And man, I, I left that just so disappointed. I'm like, man, my football career is over with and stuff. And <laughs> my good friend, Chris Smith, he made me <laughs> go watch the Jets play the Atlanta Falcons on that Monday went to like some bar or whatever. And I just felt like so shitty. <laughs> I, it, it was terrible because it's like, I'm seeing Damon Snacks Harrison make plays. I'm seeing Quentin Copas make plays, David Harris. I'm like, and I'm envisioning myself being on that field with them. And like, I blew it. And I'm like, yo, Chris, just take me home, man. And at that point, Antoine Barnes that got hurt, um, uh, linebacker to F F out of FIU who played with the Chargers and the Ravens stuff, and uh, they had brought him over when Rex came over um, to the Jets. Uh, after I seen that, I took that as a sign, like, you're, you're done. And I left, and I went back to the hotel I was staying at and stuff, and I was just like, I was just so out of it. And um, one of the few times that I, I, I tell people about this, I'll almost took my life because it was like I, I wasn't I didn't have a degree I didn't have any money um the girl that I was talking to at the time she had I was I thought I was going to have like a kid but after she seen that I wasn't making anything of myself she up and ran um and it's like I, was, I didn't want to go back home I just felt so embarrassed and stuff and <laughs> by the grace of God my agent called me <laughs> before I ended up pulling the trigger on myself called me like, yo, the New Year just want to sign you. And like, he left me, like, he called me like three times. I'm looking at my phone like, what? And then I get a call from a New Jersey number. I call from my agent, Ryan Rubin, at, uh, at the time. And he was, just, I picked up the phone. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, yeah, the New Year just want to put you on practice squad. Didn't even know what practice squad was. I was like, I'm ready. Uh, and I flew up to the Jets the next day. And it was history. But just going through those trials and tribulations, it was I think about it now it was tough but it made me a better person like stuff that I go through now is a lot easier than I could picture it when I was like a, a young younger adult and and it's like certain things don't affect me when I get fussed at by my boss or whatever it goes in it doesn't go in one ear and out the other it's just like all right cool I understand here's what I did wrong and I'm able to make myself a better employee off of that and when things aren't going my way at work or I'm handling like a tough issue or dealing with different things that to the normal person or whatever, like I might get fired off of this. It doesn't make, it doesn't, I don't get afraid off. I don't, I don't fear things like that. Cause I'm like, man, I've gotten cut six times from uh, the, on, on different teams and stuff. I've had leagues folded under me and things not go my way. So I'm, I'm damn that if it's something I should try or, I might fail at this. It's all good. I'm going to, like, by the grace of God, I'll wake up tomorrow and have another shot to possibly be successful at this. So I know that was a mouthful, but it was like, when you asked that question, just start taking me back to different places and things like that. So, man, that, that was deep. I, um, yeah. it, uh, I feel yeah. like at least you're in a spot mm -hmm. that everyone, hopefully everyone gets there but particularly athletes in that transition like realizing that football is a thing that you do it's not who you are and, and basically having the, the confidence of having gone through that that whole man the the whole crucible that, that was your football journey just sort of like realizing like it's it's a job it's not who i am i'll wake up tomorrow if it goes away I, it, just, it, just, it was a ride it's, it's tough to even think like that like, as it is, is just a job because it's, it's more than that. You dedicate so much of your time, like whether it's the way you eat, you train, the way you miss out on like birthdays and family events. Like I'm like, I had to leave my daughter's first birthday to go try out for the Atlanta Falcons. And just for that workout to get canceled on my way to like Flowery Brett, because I stayed at, in Atlanta at the time. And so I left the left the birthday to go um, go to my workout and stuff. And I'm up I'm up 85, and <laughs> they call me to tell me they um, they pulled the workout. And it's like stuff like that. It makes it more than a job because like in my in my mind, maybe it's just the football. 
acting um uh factor that um, comes in it's like all right cool if i don't like this job then i'll leave i've left plenty of jobs <laughs> that i did not like and like sometimes i give them a two-week notice sometimes it was like uh i'm just i'm you know guys aren't going to see me again um but when it comes to like the sport that you play or something that you really are invested in it could be like I want to be the best financial advisor or whatever career that you choose. And you dedicate so much time to it and it doesn't pan out. And it's like, man, you know, and then you try to transition and do some, some other stuff in it. And it's tough and you're, cause you're seeing like all your friends and people that you care about, or even like you get on social media and like people are doing well, which is like, it might not seem that way, but it's in your mind. It's like, man, why am I not doing well at this? And it, it gets to you. But overall, just I just found a way just to just to get past all that and finally get to a space where, all right, cool, I'm good. And I talk to like the uh, former athletes all the time, and they always say, like, everyone, everyone, 10 out of 10, the hardest part was transitioning out because you've done this sport for so long and you've dedicated so much time to it now that you're trying to find something else to do and it's hard until you find out like hey these skills that i have from football basketball tennis whatever are transferable into like um these real life situations which make you more employable um to these like companies and stuff and for a long time i didn't i took nfl off of my resume because i wasn't getting the calls and things like that because people were afraid that i'd go back to play football and i've done that before but um now talking to different people more professional people like oh this is such a uh a positive thing people see that you're a hard worker you work you work well with teams things of that nature and you have different accolades and stuff and you're able to play for a long time like it's a real positive thing so it's something that i'm able to be proud of now and I'm, i keep it on my resume and stuff as you should man I, i'm glad that you're there so i as we get towards the end here, I, I just want to get a little more positivity about the football days in there. I, I didn't mean to really dwell yeah, on it. It's a journey. It's a journey. It is a journey. So since, you know, to, to get a, a little yin to that yang, you know, you, you have to do so much to stick. And you see a lot along the way, the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. And again, just because I, I, it would take hours for me to really get into the weeds of the way that I want to on a lot of your journey, but just at a high level, when you think about the different organizations, what makes a great organization? You know, is it really just leadership at the top or are there certain things that you can really put your finger on? And, and I want to break that down by organization versus coaches versus players. Like ultimately, what does it take to be great at each level? I feel as though you have to have a, a, a great coach. Like Rex Ryan was probably like the best. Rex Ryan and Andy Reid were like the best coaches that I've had. And only two coaches that I've had other than, um, uh, I forget the uh, coach name in Carolina, but um, who's that? The, what's the, the name? Ron Rivera. I didn't have en enough experience with him to actually say like, oh, he's a really great coach or he's a bad coach or whatever. But you have to have a really good coach and a coach that understands um, his players. Um, like Rex was a really good people's, uh, not people, players coach. Didn't He didn't let us get away with things because we had like a more of an internal system called make it right. And But you have to have a coach with some type of sternness like uh, Andy Reid, who was, who was known as a players coach, but – he doesn't try to let, how can I say this, a star player be like, oh, you can do whatever you want or whatever. Because I remember it was with um, Travis Kelsey. He had one player of the week. Yeah, I think it was against the Chargers or whatever. And then he's giving out the footballs to different players and stuff. And he says, uh, 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 Travis Kelsey. And Travis Kelsey is nowhere to be found. And he, you can see the red red is my shirt on his face and he's just upset that what the hell is Kelsey at but um he ripped him to him later on but you need a coach that's going to hold everybody accountable that's, that's that also understands like his players and stuff you also need a gen general manager that's going to bring in talent that's going to be able to help you guys get over the hump and you also need good leadership in the locker room that's going to like old older veteran guys that get it they might not be the 
at their prime or still elite, but they still can mentor players because I know when we drafted um, Leo Williams out of uh, USC, part one of the rawest rookies that I've ever been around who needed a, a veteran leader like Stephen Bowen, somebody who uh, he played with the Cowboys and the Washington Redskins at the time. Um, really an, an, an established leader in the locker room was able to mentor him and uh, you see what, how well he's doing now with the New York football giants. So it's, it's a good mix of all three can't be, you don't see franchises do well without, without uh, all those three being ingrained. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So for, for you specifically, you know, for anyone that doesn't know three tech nose tackle, Man, you, power game, you could stuff the run. It's stuff that sadly doesn't really show up in any stat sheet. So, you know, for the, the TikTok haters out there, you know, take a chill pill. I mean, I mean, come on. When it comes to being like for that style of game, I mean, what was most important for you that made you as good as you were? And, and also I want to get into what, what a little bit of the keys, you know, what made you as good. I'm sure a lot of it is reading what's about to happen on the offensive line. What was some of the yeah. keys to focus in on? The biggest thing was my technique and just film study because I'm like, I got to the NFL and people were just as big as I am and or they were just as skillful as I, as I was, if not better. And so I had to pick up on little tendencies that people do to get a, a step on like the uh, competitor, like a quarterback will, um, will wipe his towel when they're about to pass or they might have a certain foot back when they're about to pass or do certain things or I know what's one I can um or their cadence or whatever um there's we played in the XFL uh, when I played in the XFL we were playing against the Dallas team and um it's a it's a clip um they said some type of word or whatever and like I always listen to the TV copy because you pick up on like different type of uh vocab that they use or whatever but they said some type of word and with the Jets Vito was one of their equipment managers and no they said it was goose goose they're gonna goose it which is a term that um the article when the quarterbacks come for a shotgun get on the center and just snap it to get the first down it's like a quarterback sneak and so um, I was at XFL we we're in Dallas and the quarterback was saying all right cool we're gonna goose it we're gonna goose it. and I had listened like I said I, I listened and I watched film like like nobody's business. And so he said, Goose, I'm like, oh, they're about to do quarterback sneak and got to stop and stuff. But just stuff like that was able to set me apart from like guys who were like, because I was on the borderline on 53, but it started to set me apart. Like, all right, cool. We need TJ to be on this team versus all right, cool. He's just expendable or whatnot. Um, when I when we played, what's another? When, we, when I played the Miami Dolphins on Monday night. I was able to get my first TFL versus Ryan Tannehill because of just watching film. Like when he has his uh, left foot back on the read option at the time, he's going to keep it. And I, as soon as I see now, all right, cool. If it's a run, I'm going to toss this guy. And just, I'm just dive at the first thing I see, Ryan Tannehill or whatever. Just, just stuff like that was able to set me apart from like being just barely making the 53 to our cool. This is the guy we need on this team. So. Yeah, it's a game of inches. And when everyone physically is so close, those inches come in the mental game. So uh, glad you were able to, again, take that transition into you know, what you're doing outside of the game. And as we get towards wrapping up, one of those things is, uh, I want to make sure I get it right. Yo, Pass the Sticks, it's the new podcast that you're working on. So can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, man. Um, I'm a big video gamer and stuff. And that name just came from like when you're getting beat on like where you're playing Madden 2K or whatever. Like when you're getting beat by 20 minutes, like, all right, cool, yo, pass the sticks to somebody else or whatever. And that's, we just came up with that. And we just talk about sports, um, my transition from sports into cybersecurity or just whatever is going on in like the uh, pop culture or like different type of topics in the sport, sports world. We just had like a debate about um, Kobe versus LeBron uh, in the top five or whatever my co-host who's from Cleveland had LeBron at number three and Kobe at number two and I just thought that was like kind of blasphemous him being it from is. Cleveland and thank you and him not having LeBron at number two or number one or whatever but it's just it's just this is real just barbershop talk to be honest with you so cool well hey man you got the gift to gab I, I love again what you're doing on TikTok love that you're, you're involved in another podcast now so 
Um, where do people, if they want to listen, where's the best place? Anywhere that you find podcasts available, to be honest with you, just type in Yo Pass the Sticks and it'll be the first thing that pops up. All right. Well, TJ, to wrap this up, I got this little thing called the gauntlet. I got a couple quick hitter questions, man. I need your knee jerk reaction to a couple of things, mm -hmm. starting with what's most important, having the number one offense or the number one defense? Number one defense. All right. Pre-game ritual. Was there anything you had to do? Man, there were so many. And there's a couple that I, I know I can't say on this. Um, uh, what? What's one that I can't say? I would always listen to Deion Sanders' Hall of Fame speech forever. Like, that's something that I had to listen to because it was a part in that where he talks about his mom and things that he, that he had to do and the person that he had to create prime time. And once I got that, like the person I had to create, because I, I never, I tried to have fun on the field or whatever, but that particularly didn't work for me. And I remember getting fleshed out by my uh, D-line coach called Dunbar because like I was, we played the Detroit Lions in 2014 and um, I was like making plays and I was bullshitting, making plays and bullshitting and stuff. And he uh, yanked me, he gave me an earful because I got, I missed a, t I missed a tackle that, that could have possibly given our offense uh, another possession to uh, win the game. And so I had to go in the mirror, a mirror and create a different type of persona because this playing nice guy wasn't working out for me. And then once I did that, I just, it had to be like, that's something that I had to listen to on my way to the stadium and stuff. And it made a difference. Well, at another time, we'll have to get into some of the other ones that you, you can't talk about. I, 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 want, I want the whole list eventually. I know I'm not going to get it now. Um, right. But, man, do, do you have a favorite football memory? My favorite? I have many, but the one that I can think of, and this is something that I had talked about on TikTok, um, I, that season, 2014, had been kind of shaken for me because after that Lions game, I had been inactive for the – uh, for about six, seven games straight. And it was because I was basically pussyfooting or whatever. I was bullshitting or whatnot. And I didn't develop that character until we played the Buffalo Bills in, in Detroit. And because the um, Buffalo had like a, a terrible snowstorm and they couldn't practice or get out to their facility or anything like that. And so we had to go play in Detroit. And so I was made a, I was made a captain that game and I was talking to Snacks, and um, and this is where I found out I was a captain. I'm like, uh, it was, <laughs> it's funny because like this was like probably the worst week for me to play because I was not on my diet. I was like, man, I'm not gonna play this game, so I'm gonna just eat whatever the hell I wanted after I made weight that week. And usually when I go to different cities and stuff, I'll try like the dessert, the best dessert that they have, or whatever. And I did that. I had like three of them, and so we get to the game. I'm talking to Snacks. And he was telling me that you're going to play. I'm like, bro, I've been practicing all week and with like the, to get some game, some, some reps. I've been on scout team all week. I've eaten like shit. I ain't playing. And he's like, yeah, you playing then. <laughs> Lo and behold, Rex comes out of nowhere. Like, Yo, kid, you're a captain. And he gives me the look like you need to do something or you're going to get cut. And so, <laughs> man, I, I hit everything and I was moving. I had like one of the best games of my career and stuff. And. Um, man, it's just something that I, I – and it's one particular photo that my brother got, and I don't know if you ever played Mortal Kombat before. Uh, Raiden, who does, like, the little, uh, I guess, flying tackle or whatnot, it's a picture of me stretching out for, like, almost 10 yards to uh, tackle Booby Gibson and um, uh, stop him from getting the first down. And it's just something that I always look back on, like, oh, this is uh, – me just give effort in a situation that not most people would. So that's that's probably like my best football memory, that Buffalo Bills game from 2014 in the season, which it was able to help me get more looks from different teams and stuff when I was eventually released from the Jets and stuff. So For sure. Well, TJ, just one last one uh, to wrap this up on, and that is everything you've gone through, everything you're still doing as you continue to live your life, What's the best piece of advice that you would give to a young 17, 18 year old high school kid that just looks at you and says, Hey man, how, how do I get there? How do I get that max level of success? Be 
patient, be patient. Not everything is going to happen when you want it to. And don't look at everything that's going on outside your circle. Just pay attention, to, pay attention to everything that you have going on. And another thing that I would tell myself is, because I would always tell myself like, man, this is not going to work out. What if it does? And so now that's the mentality that I have now. I'm not afraid of failing or doing things like that. So Love it. So to, to finally put a pin in this, man, where can everyone follow you on social media? I mean, you can follow me anywhere at NFL to software develop on Instagram or TJ underscore TJ Barnes on TikTok and hit the podcast up. Yo, pass the sticks anywhere that you find podcasts available. Love it. TJ, thank you so much for taking the time today, man. Really enjoyed it. Man, thank you for having me. Anytime you need somebody else, you need to fill her in or whatever, you can call me. So.